Hi, welcome to this episode of Millennial Pocket. Today we're going to be looking at the history of Amazon. Amazon is an online retailer, manufacturer of electronic book readers, and web services provider that became the iconic example of electronic commerce. Amazon is the leading e-retailer in the United States, with close to $386 billion in 2020 net sales. But how did it become the leader in the e-commerce space and one of the most valuable companies in the world? Let's take a look. In 1994, Jeff Bezos was working as vice president of D.E. Shaw & Co., a Wall Street firm in New York. When Bezos was 30, he began to see the internet revolution take place and made the decision to quit his job and start an internet company. He noticed that the web usage was growing at 2,300% at that time and started to think about what kind of business could make sense for that opportunity. After making a list of the top 20 products that he could potentially sell on the internet, he decided on books because of their low cost and universal demand. The company was originally to be called Kadabra, but Bezos' lawyer advised him that the reference to magic might be a bit too obscure. He chose the name Amazon primarily because it began with the first letter of the alphabet and because of its association with the vast South American river, as Bezos envisioned his company being the largest online distributor. The first initial startup capital for the company came primarily from his parents, who invested a large fraction of their life savings, making a bet on their son. Amazon started its journey in a garage in Seattle because Bezos wanted to take advantage of the city's reputation as a tech hub. The company wasn't the first one to sell books online. Computer Literacy, a Silicon Valley bookstore, began selling books from its inventory to its technically astute customers in 1991. However, the promise of Amazon was to deliver any book to any reader anywhere. In the first two months of business, Amazon sold to all 50 states and over 45 countries, and within two months, Amazon sales were up to $20,000 per week. The company raised a Series A of $8 million from Kleiner, Perkins, Caulfield and Byers in 1995. And from that, Amazon grew fast, reaching 180,000 customer accounts by December 1996, and less than a year later, it had 1 million customer accounts. Its revenues jumped from $15.7 million in 1996 to $148 million in 1997, followed by $610 million in 1998. After its first successful years, Amazon went public on May 15, 1997 to raise additional capital, and by the end of the 90s, it started selling other goods like DVDs, music, electronics, toys and kitchen utensils. The company also patented one-click buying technology, which allowed shoppers to buy one item quickly without having to go through a cart and checkout process every time. In 1999, Amazon launched its third-party seller marketplace, which began allowing for other vendors to use the Amazon platform to sell products. While many companies use Amazon as their online storefront today, it was originally a way for buyers to connect with sellers of collectible books or other rare items that they might not be able to find with regular retailers. By the mid-2000s, Amazon launched Amazon Web Services, this innovation fitted well with Bezos' initial ambition to make Amazon a tech company rather than an online retailer exclusively. The new service provided data on website popularity, internet traffic patterns and other statistics for marketers and developers. In 2006, the company expanded its Amazon Web Services portfolio with its Elastic Compute Cloud, which rents out computer processing power, and Simple Storage Service, which rents data storage over the internet. Amazon Web Services quickly succeeded and helped popularize the idea that companies and individuals don't need to own computing resources, they can rent them as needed over the internet. Nowadays, this cloud service is even used by Amazon's rivals, such as Netflix, which uses it for its competing video streaming service. Soon after, Amazon felt the need to boost its delivery service for loyal customers, and in 2005 it launched Amazon Prime offering quicker shipping for selected items. 
This boosted sales of all sorts of goods and became one of the most valuable Amazon assets for both the business and the consumer. More than 200 million paying customers are now members of subscription service Amazon Prime, where shoppers can get free shipping on physical products, as well as access to a whole host of other digital features like video and music streaming. As I mentioned earlier, the company started a service that lets small companies and individuals sell their products on its platform. And by 2006, Amazon started its Fulfillment by Amazon service that managed the inventory of such businesses. When ebooks started to become popular, Bezos launched the Kindle in 2007, eventually becoming the global leader in the sector. In fact, by 2012, the Kindle was estimated to constitute 50% of the tablets sold that used Google's Android mobile operating system. On January 31, 2008, Amazon announced it would buy Audible, a digital audiobooks provider, for about $300 million. Amazon's interest in the digital content became more and more evident since its Kindle ebook reader, and with this new purchase, Amazon's goal was to introduce more innovations and bring the digital audio format to an even wider audience. Also, Amazon was the first big tech company to launch a smart device. In 2014, it released the Echo Speaker, equipped with the firm's own artificial intelligence system, Alexa. The Echo platform brought Alexa into homes everywhere. Users could now just ask questions, check the weather, listen to music and much more, all without having to interface with a physical device, adding additional conveniences to the lives of customers everywhere. In August 2014, Amazon acquired Twitch, a live streaming platform primarily oriented towards video gaming content. The deal cost Amazon $970 million, which clearly was turning more and more to media. Its prime service offered a Netflix-like streaming functionality of shows and movies, and the company saw game-related video as the future of content. Twitch is also a magnet for marketers looking to reach out to an engaged audience of young people, and Amazon may have the power to turn that into a serious profit-generating machine. In 2017, the company made another important acquisition, the supermarket chain Whole Foods, in a deal valued at more than $13 billion. The deal made sense, since it markedly expanded Amazon's reach offline and helped to push its delivery online services, thanks to the integration with Prime. Amazon has been working on its drone delivery service Primer since 2016, a system designed to safely get packages to customers in 30 minutes. The company believes in incorporating drones into its delivery system because they not only are much faster, but they also have advantages for communities around them by eliminating traffic and fossil fuel emissions. While the speed and convenience of drone delivery is a benefit for Amazon customers and an advantage for the company, Amazon could also derive huge savings on the cost side if drone deliveries become a reality. The acquisition of Whole Foods has already helped Amazon's revenue from physical stores. Its growing bet on physical stores is also evident from the company's expansion of its other two physical store types, like Amazon Go, a convenience store which is completely unmanned, where you get charged through the Amazon app, and Amazon Fresh, a store where every time you put something in your cart or even take it out, the technology is able to capture it. It may take some more time before management solidifies its bricks and mortar strategy, but it's increasingly clear that Amazon wants to find a way to increase its presence in physical locations. What do you think about Amazon? What's going to be the next move for the company? Would you invest in it? Please let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like if you got some value from this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Feel free to follow us on Instagram, we post every day there. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching guys, until next time.